Okay, let's take a look at this problem. We've already talked about uh, the car, sorry, the truck. The truck's moving at a constant 34 meters per second. The motorcycle is accelerated. He starts from rest. As soon as the, the speeder passes the cop, the cop then accelerates from initially at rest. Uh, we understand then if the motion is uniform, there's only one equation to really model that motion for uh, constant velocity, and that's velocity is equal to uh, displacement over time. What should I use for the cop? If we only know A and V naught, what would be a logical one to use? Anyone? Okay, so the second one would be V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. Where time is not known and the final velocity is not known, there are two unknowns here. How many unknowns do we have up in the equation up top? Two. We don't know the time and we don't know the displacement. How do these two unknowns compare to those two unknowns? Are they exactly the same or are they different? They are different. They are different. Anytime you are stuck with two unknowns, if this was the only equation that you had, you can't solve it. It's unsolvable. And so there should be something. If there isn't now, hopefully there will be down uh, after having this conversation in your belly that says, if I have two unknowns, but I have two equations, I can still solve this problem. I can, I can actually find an answer to this. But I need two equations with the same two unknowns. What would be another choice, Hunter, that would give me the same two unknowns? Number one, delta x is equal to VOT plus one-half AT squared, where the initial velocity of the cop is zero, and this reduces to delta x is equal to one-half AT squared, where, where both time and delta x are not known. I can solve the upper one for delta x. That becomes delta x is equal to the velocity of the speeding truck times the time. This delta x is equal to that delta x at the same time. By the way, before I even get to finishing this problem, what would the graphs look like of x position versus time, um, Casey? What would the graph look like for the truck of x position versus time? Okay. It's a straight line. Good. It's linear. It's going exactly like that. And uh, Peter, how about for the, uh, for the motorcycle? Is it a line? It's, no, it's a swoop. Okay, it's a swoop, or in mathematics, a curve. Is it concave up like this or concave down, open downward? It's uh, concave up. Good. So it's going to look something like this. And we want to know what that time is, and we want to know what that x position is, and we can solve this problem. That's exactly what we're doing right now, is we're finding that point of intersection in this system of equations, algebraically by setting delta x equal to delta x. That becomes vx of the truck times time is equal to 1 half at squared, where a is the acceleration of the motorcycle. I divide both sides by t. I get vx is equal to 1 half a times t, because I eliminate one of those t by dividing both sides by t. Solving for t, I get 2 times the velocity of the car over the acceleration of the motorcycle is equal to the time to that point of intersection. Then I get 2 times 34 meters per second over my acceleration of 3.5 meters per second per second is equal to time. That's going to give me 68 over 3.5, and 68 over 3.5 is 19.5. Four seconds. 19.4 seconds is the amount of time that it takes this to happen. I would need to truncate that for numerical significance down to 19. What do I do now that I have that in order to answer the second question? Why don't you use the second equation? Could you, you know, the same spot and then go like, like, back the We do. The problem with the second equation is that the two unknowns here don't match up with the same two unknowns here. And the fact that those two unknowns are different means that we can't use a system of equation methods to solve. There are three unknowns now. No, no. As a matter of fact, the, the slope, if I look right here, the slope of these two functions at time t are very different meaning the slope of the motorcycle is much steeper than the slope of the car, which means that when the motorcycle catches up to him, the motorcycle is going way faster. So we can't say that their velocities are the same. As a matter of fact, if the motorcycle just sped up to 34 meters per second, he would never catch him. 
because he was going 34 meters per second as soon as he left. This guy took additional time to catch up to 34 meters per second. He'd never be catching up. Make sense? Okay, so we take the 19.4 seconds. What do we do with the 19.4 seconds? We backfeed it into either of those models, either of those models to find delta x. It doesn't matter which one, and we get what number? I'm sorry? 616? Thank you. 660. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, 660 meters will be the horizontal displacement. So this is at 19 seconds, and this is at 660 meters. We now have a point of intersection. That's about, you know, almost two-thirds uh, of a kilometer. Two-thirds of a kilometer. Any questions on that problem? Uh, 